And then what I'll do is I'll use my pliers to discharge it. Did you see how big that spark was? So, the humble CRT. It was the basis of the first actual television. It's basically a gigantic vacuum tube with an electron gun in the back that accelerates electrons from a heated cathode to an extremely fast speeds before slamming them into a phosphor screen where they emit light in a specific point where the beam hits. Now, cathode ray tubes are pretty cool, but there's a little feature of them that I'd like to talk about in this video, and that's the capacitance of a cathode ray tube. Okay, this isn't the smartest move. Ow! Yeah. Yeah, I got shocked. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Alright, so this is a CRT. As you can see, this is a CRT without any yoke or without any circuit board below it. So in this CRT, you've got the CRT and it's hooked up to a circuit board. The circuit board is the board that controls it and puts out a high voltage. This small transformer here puts out a very, very high voltage that drives the cathode ray tube. You've also got a few other components back here inside the glass tube. And this is an example of a CRT. You know, I took this one out of a miniature CRT and kind of put it on cardboard so you can see it better. I made this a while back, but so it's not the highest quality, but it looks pretty cool. Now, typically, when you look at an electronics channel, a lot of channels show you how to take apart a cathode ray tube and how to extract some useful components out of it. Now, they also warn you of the danger of this CRT as a charge capacitor. So let me turn on this TV for you for a second. You can see that there's a dot in the screen which verifies that it's on. And because of the dot, that means there's a lot of voltage on it, which means a lot of brightness, which means when I disconnect it and short it across here, you can hear a little spark happen. I'm not sure if you were able to hear that, but there was most definitely a spark. And I'm sure if I touch this, then I can feel that spark. Okay, this isn't the smartest move. Ow! Yeah. Yeah, I got shocked. So as you can see, those other electronics channels have good reason to warn you about the dangers of CRTs. As you can see, that small CRT had a sufficient charge inside it to give me a little bit of a shock. But larger CRTs have bigger capacitances. Let me talk about why those capacitances exist and how they happen. First of all, by explaining kind of how a CRT works. So the basics, we've got a tube with a screen. And the tube has some electrodes inside it. Now on the back of the tube there's a small coil and this small coil heats up to a very hot temperature which releases electrons around it. Now these electrons are negative and so we have these electrodes up here and these electrodes are called focusing electrodes and they are very high voltage positive and these focusing electrodes draw in these electrons and they put them through these little holes in the electrons to fire them into a beam out to the screen. Now there's something called the final accelerator electrode and that final accelerator electrode actually takes the place of the entire screen. That is what that red cap goes to. So this electrode is actually coated onto the glass on the inside of the screen and it actually touches the screen. It starts right after these little electrodes at the back of the tube. Now another reason for this final accelerator electrode is to provide a return path for the electrons after they are fired at the screen because they have to go somewhere and that somewhere is back through the electrode on the glass and back into the circuit. Now taking a look at this CRT that I have right here, we can kind of see some of the components that I was mentioning. So this is the electron gun, as you can see in the back it's clear glass, and then right here you can see that it's still glass but something else starts here, and it's kind of this grayish silverish color. That is called aquadag, and aquadag is graphite mixed with water. Now let's say it's the same graphite that's in my pencil which is conductive. That graphite is mixed with water uniformly and then coated on the inside of this CRT and then heated until it's baked, which means that it is a conductive coating on the inside of the glass. That's what Aquadag is. It's not used much anymore because CRTs aren't used much, but it's still pretty cool. So that's coated on the inside of the screen and it goes all the way up inside. And you can see that silver coating that's next to the anode cap. 
Now the anode cap actually connects to the inside. You can see that there's aquadag inside this little coating, and that goes to the inside electrode of the glass. Now there's also a coating of aquadag on the outside of the CRT. That's why there's this kind of metal-y stuff on the outside. And as you can see, the outside coating doesn't go anywhere near the uh, anode cap because the anode cap is kind of isolated from that by some glass. Right here is just plain old glass. The silver stuff is, you can see the end glass, and the silver stuff is on the inside. And the outside, where it's kind of rough, is where the aqua dagger on the outside is. Now, this anode cap is positive and it goes to the inside electrode, but why is there an outside electrode? Well, this electrode actually contributes to a capacitor, and this CRT actually forms the output capacitor of the high voltage power supply. So in the case of a CRT, you have a high voltage power supply provided by a flyback transformer. That's what that little red wire is that goes to the anode cap. Just a second, this pencil is out of lead, or graphite. So this anode cap comes out of the transformer and it is what goes to the anode cap of the CRT. Now this transformer also has a diode on it to rectify the voltage so that the only positive voltage is present on this anode cap. So the electrons can flow back through the transformer and then negative end of the transformer goes to the cathode so all of the electrons can be accelerated towards the outside. Now. As many of you may know, if you have just a single diode on the output of an AC transformer, that's going to provide a rippling voltage that looks something like this. That rippling voltage is pretty good and it can be used, but it's still a rippling voltage. And so that's not ideal to use for a DC cathode ray tube because that means that the little dot is going to be actually pulsing at a certain frequency, which you probably don't want. So the people that designed the CRTs did something pretty cool, and they actually made the CRT an output capacitor, because as you may know, if you have a power supply with a diode, and you put a capacitor on the output of it, then that capacitor will actually smooth out the voltage, because the high frequency electricity will flow through the capacitor back to ground and only let the DC pass. It is a form of a low pass filter that only lets the DC pass. So that is why they put aquadag on the outside coating of this capacitor because the aquadag actually forms a capacitor. As you may know, capacitors are formed by two electronic plates with a piece of glass in between. And so you have this CRT full of glass, you have the inside coating made of aquadag, and you have the outside coating made of aquadag. On this CRT you can see this little tiny rake that's actually connected to the aquadag coating on the outside. It's kind of strange. It's a spring-loaded rake. And it goes to this wire, and this wire goes down to this little cap on the back of the CRT. And where the wire connects, it actually says ground. So that means that the outside of this CRT is grounded, while the inside of this CRT is at a positive 35,000 volts DC current. Which means that there's a capacitor across the output of the power supply in the form of this flyback transformer, which means that the actual CRT can be used as an output capacitor that smooths out the output voltage. That is why the anode cap is physically isolated from the outside of the CRT because it can't touch if it wants to be part of the capacitor. That is also why there's this rubber coating that forms the outside of the anode cap, so we don't have any arcs that arc to the outside, and those arcs would ultimately cause the capacitor to not be successful. To prove that this is indeed a capacitor, I have my multimeter right here, which is set to nanofarads. So as you can see, with nothing connected, it is at 0.89 nanofarads, which equals out to approximately 91 picofarads. Now if I connect it to the CRT, you can see that the capacitance inch jumps all the way up to 0.264 nanofarads, if I can get this connected right. So that 0.264 nanofarads is actually 81, 260 picofarads. So the amount of capacitance in this small CRT is only 261 picofarads, which isn't that much, but it is enough to filter the output voltage 
from the flyback transformer, which is pretty cool. Now, some of the bigger CRTs and larger televisions have a higher capacitance because, of course, they have a higher surface area because they're larger CRTs. But still, it's pretty interesting to see. We can definitely see there's a change in capacitance due to the CRT. As one final test of this CRT as a capacitor, I hooked it up to my very high voltage power supply. And as you can see, I can charge it up with this power supply because I have the negative end on the AquaDag and I have the positive end sitting on top of this little anode cap. And as you can see, there's a little bit of connection when it charges up, but after that it is gone. And as you can see, I can hear it clicking even after it's dead. Ow! And I just got shocked. Because you see how big that spark was? Alright, check this out. This is a quick test of it as a capacitor. That kind of spark is exclusive to a capacitor bank in parallel with a 5 voltage power supply. To show you, let me first short this thing out. And just connect the high voltage wire to the ground and you can see the complete difference that it makes. As you can see the spark is a lot more purple and it has less energy. And that's because as this thing charges, it stores energy inside the capacitor and that energy is then discharged through the air gap which creates a larger spark. So I hope you learned a little bit of something about these really cool CRTs and how they work and I hope you go out and look for electronics and figure out how they work by yourself too. I'm glad I can help you learn a little bit more about CRTs. I just thought this was a little cool bit of interesting knowledge that I know but uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.